Welcome to the Write Your Own Story podcast. I'm your host, Betsy Leonidas, and the founder of the Write Your Own Story company. Girl, I can tell you right now, you are definitely enough. Here we value service, sisterhood, connection, laughter, and that super genuine, keep it real, tell you like it is honesty. My hope is at the end of each episode, you realize you can do whatever it is you dream about and that you are not alone with what you struggle with. I'm hoping that you are snapping and clapping and hell yes in your way through each one of these episodes. So if this tracks with you, let's get started. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome back to the Write Your Own Story podcast. I'm your host, Betsy Leonidas. And today I am here to talk to you guys about something that I think so many women suffer from, and that is imposter syndrome. Um, I got a lot going on right now. I got glasses on and these headphones, and I'm trying to manage my peppermint tea and I have upgraded some of my show notes to a binder with multiple kinds of tabs. So I don't mean to brag, but I'm like really organized right now and it feels amazing. But yes, besides the fact that I just, excuse me if you're watching me and this is on a reel and I've got things on my lap and pillows surrounding me and I'm just, I don't know, I'm just being me guys. Um, But that's what's going on um, in case you are just listening and not watching. I got a lot to manage in, in this episode. Okay. So imposter syndrome, let's talk about it. I feel like this is just such a huge issue for people in general, but especially for women. Um, So when I think about imposter syndrome, um, what does that mean to me? That to me is the lump in your throat um, that keeps you from showing up, whether that be from saying how you really feel for showing up at all for being who you truly are, uh, for playing small, for dimming your light. That to me is exactly what imposter syndrome is. Um, How it shows up, people pleasing, perfectionism, paralysis. Those are some of the big, big, big ones. I think some examples that we can think about are imposter syndrome in motherhood and Um, how we feel the need to be perfect and our kids are such a reflection of our ability to be perfect and and we'll dive into that one. But I kind of wanted to pick two through lines of examples, one being motherhood, um, because I think everyone can relate to that um, if you are a mom and then also showing up for your business online. If you are someone who is creating any type of content in the online space, man, oh man, imposter syndrome is just like here on the daily. We talked a lot about this in Female Founders Academy and it absolutely tracked with everyone. Um, And I just think, you know, in conversations with friends and other women, this absolutely is a huge, huge through line. Um, So really this episode is dedicated to those who feel terrified to show up as their full selves. Um, I am someone who literally gets on camera and on a microphone every single week to record an episode. And I absolutely suffer from imposter syndrome. Um, just to be completely, we're just going to go for it in this episode. I'm just going to like spill, spill the beans here, but it's so much easier for me to hop on a podcast and interview people and help tell their story because, you know, I don't have to, I'm just a conduit of conversation versus if I get on these solo episodes, it's all about me. Or if I get on Instagram or an email or whatever other channel and talk about my business courses, that is just talking about me, my expertise, my passion and what I offer. And oh my God, does that make my chest tighten my throat, you know, not close, but get a huge lump in it. Um, I can tell that the energy that I bring to these things is different than when I am talking about other women. It is so easy for me to hype other women up, to, you know, be a facilitator of conversation, to help other people tell their story, to tell my best friends, my daughter, my sons, how amazing they are, because I genuinely mean it. But to tell myself those things is so incredibly hard. Um, and I just, I just want to put it out there. This is so hard getting on these solo episodes, the things that come through my head. I'm like, why would anyone want to listen to just me or my business courses? When I have almost 20 years of corporate experience, have done a nonprofit and e-commerce business and now building this business as a single mom, I'm like, why would anyone want to listen to me? 
And listen, I'm not everyone's cup of tea and that is totally fine with me, but oh my God, why are these voices in my head when I am so fortunate to constantly have people telling me how much they love the show, how much they love the business courses, how much they look forward to my content online, how much they appreciate me as a friend. Like how lucky am I to receive that type of feedback? Yet I have such a hard time internalizing that. Um, and letting that be the talk track in my head versus these stupid, fearful, negative stories that I can just tell myself over and over and over. I know I'm not alone in this. And yeah, I kind of wish I was drinking wine instead of peppermint tea to get through this episode because it is going to be a really vulnerable one. But I think it is so important for you guys to know that you are not alone when it comes to imposter syndrome. Um, and yes, I'm just going to try and like weave some, some thread lines through motherhood and through how showing up for your business online, just so you guys can make some common connections. But I encourage you guys to open your mind and think about all the other ways that we are showing up, not fully as ourselves. Um, gosh, I have so much to say on this subject. I recently turned my basement into a home gym, literally all from Amazon. And I could not be more obsessed. I got an elliptical that I actually love, a reformer that I'm obsessed with and is saving my life. And all my decor that makes it not just a home gym, but feel bougie. I mean, we're talking wallpaper accent walls and a chandelier without breaking the bank. Now I have space where me and my four kids can all work out together. I love Amazon because I furnish or style my home in a way that feels like such a reflection of me without having to break the bank. If you're like me and get a little bit sad, okay, maybe more than a little bit sad, <laughs> when there's no package at the door, then you are my people. Also, I think we need help. But until then, visit amazon.com backslash shop backslash write your own story. Or even better, click the link in the show notes and shop all my favorite finds in fashion, beauty, home decor, organization, and more. From my cart to yours, these are the treasures you don't want to miss. I think really, you know, as I like just to kind of start every intention off again, this episode is dedicated to those who feel terrified to fully show up as your own self. And, you know, that maybe you're showing up at 90%, that maybe you're showing up as the perfect percent, which is that really you? Is that really anyone? Um, so I would encourage you to really have a think about what that means. Um, and really the intention is in everything I do when I offer things to people. So the intention of all of Female Founders Academy, any of the business courses, um, and really like even in the podcast, when people can hear things and relate is to go from that stuck feeling where you feel like it's just you, you're stuck, you're hiding, you're playing small, you're really ruminating on something. You are just stuck to showing up for yourself in any way, shape or form. What does that mean? So let's dive in. Um, I think when I think about imposter syndrome, again, it's that feeling or that lump in your throat. I'm just flipping through some notes while I could chat. So sorry about the paper noise in the background, but you know, I have a binder. Did I mention that? I have a binder. Yeah. Um, okay. So what is imposter syndrome? By definition, it's the condition of feeling anxious and not experiencing success internally, despite being high performing in external objective ways. Imposter syndrome is more common than you might think, affecting 70% of people at some point in their lives with women experiencing it more frequently than men. Okay, so anxious, that's sort of the lump in the throat that I was talking about, and not experiencing success internally, despite being high performing in external objective ways. Okay, so one of the examples, I don't know if anyone has seen the movie King Richard on Netflix. First of all, if you haven't, go watch it. It's fascinating. I just watched it the other day. It's all about Venus and Serena's William, Venus and Serena Williams' dad um, and sort of how he built their career, why he was the way he was. Um, and it's just truly fascinating. Um, he really just wanted his girls to be grounded as children to value education, family, et cetera, but also to keep them off the streets by putting them into this high performing, high paying sport of tennis. And he got so much flack for being, you know, so hardcore about it. And so against his culture, um, that's just a little synopsis of the movie. It's truly fascinating. Um, and I loved every second of it, but there's this moment when Venus, I'm not going to spoil it. Um, when Venus is playing in this huge match, she's so young playing against the best player in the world. Um, and 
at this moment, she is all in her head. I'm not going to give away the outcome, but she is all in her head. And her dad says to her, as she's literally like 14 years old, standing on center court at one of these massive tournaments, he's like, if you can't have respect for yourself right now, you're never going to have respect for yourself in your life. And I was like, damn, that hits. So when I am building a business that offers business courses that that puts together all of my expertise that is built on passion that I have for helping women and the fact that I'm literally obsessed with business and that I've built successful nonprofits and e-commerce business and I'm here doing this and I still can't believe in myself or I still have doubt, then that is absolutely the, the example of despite high performing external objectives, I'm not experiencing internal success. Venus doubting herself, beating herself up is absolutely not having respect for herself at one of the most pinnacle moments of her young life, despite all the external success she had to get there. And when I think about, you know, motherhood, our kids are, you know, large in part, happy, healthy, and thriving. So when you are at the soccer field and your kid just doesn't show up that day, they're having an off day and you are so disappointed in them, probably because you're so embarrassed that your kid wasn't high performing like the other kids, that has nothing to do with you. That has everything to do with where your kid is that day. And that is one of those moments where we are hiding behind perfection when really at the end of the day, that kid on the soccer field who didn't show up very well that day, who probably let down his team is a great kid who is happy and healthy and thriving. And you are a phenomenal parent because you are safe and loving and supportive and it just didn't work out that day. Or they're having a meltdown in Target and you are literally mortified and you've had, I mean, I think it's a rite of passage as a motherhood. I've carried all four of my children out of Target like a surfboard over my shoulder because they were having a complete meltdown at various times, had to leave the cart, the whole shebang. It's just, it's a rite of passage in motherhood. I was so sweaty. I was so embarrassed. But by the time the third or fourth kid did it, I was like, oh yeah, and this is just how it goes. Come on, I'm gonna throw one over the shoulder who literally is melting on the floor and I'm gonna you know, hold the hands of everybody else and we're just gonna leave Target with our head held high because I'm a damn good mom. My kids are loved and safe and supported. And no, we just didn't make it through Target this time. So I think when we think about imposter syndrome and it's a, how does it show up? then I want to really get into a couple of ways. Perfectionism. So that is like, here's an example of perfectionism for me. Oh, again, let me just expose myself. But um, I have been conditioned over, you know, 15, 20 years that you are not worthy of respect unless your home is perfectly clean and that you don't have your life together, that you are not organized, that you don't care, um, that it is unacceptable and to live in the mess a little bit or to let it be messy. And so I still, when I have people over, like I just had a party for one of my eight-year-old son's soccer team. The oldest kid was eight. Yes, there were like 40 people there because they all brought their families. But like, I found myself being like, what project can I start and complete that would make this perfect? What, you know, do I put this away? Did I finish organizing that? Does everything look perfect? And I'm like, good God, that is so not real. That is so not me. Like, yeah, my house is kind of clean. It, it well, to, honestly depends on the day. It depends on the minute, but I try and keep it clean because it makes me feel less stressed. But regardless, these people are coming over. I'm sharing my home with them so that our kids can run around and play and we can have some cocktails and just laugh and have a good time. No one cares if my books are in rainbow order at this moment. No one cares if a light is out. No one cares if I haven't gotten to put one bin of toys away yet. And so I just found myself, I know this about myself and I've been working on this for a long time and I'm, I'm pretty much over it. But, you know, like with days in advance when I was writing out the to-do list of things to get ready, I'm like, you know what? Just enjoy the process. You love to host parties. Just enjoy that process. Have the house look however you want it to look. Do your best. And the rest is all good. And people were so kind and complimentary about the home. And the most important part is that the kids had a blast. I loved hanging out with the parents. But oh my God, I could have spent days. I could have been miserable 
getting ready for this party, but I chose to enjoy myself instead and show up just as me for where I am on that day in this part of my life. Paralysis is another way that imposter syndrome shows up. So this is for all my girlies, myself absolutely included, who are creating content online, whether that be just to create content or to support a business that they're running, et cetera but you're not showing up, not nearly as consistently as you should be, barely if at all, there are certain pockets of your business, ahem, me with the business courses that I should be talking about as often as I talk about the podcast, because it is as much a part of this business, if not more part of this business than the podcast is. And here I am stuck in perfectionism and paralysis, like, well, this is what I've done for a living my whole entire life. If I don't show up as perfect, it doesn't reflect my experience. What? What? I know any of you guys listening would say to me that that's absolutely ridiculous, but in some aspect of your life, I'll perform in the same way. But paralysis is the real deal when it comes to social media. People are just terrified to show up online. You can't help but compare to people who are creating similar things. And so you just zip it. And that is not showing up for something that you care so deeply about. So paralysis has got to go. People pleasing. Okay. This is a huge one for women. I absolutely, God, this one is still, I think I've gotten a lot better. Um, but I find in other, in like little pockets of my life, it still shows up. Um, especially with people that I'm just meeting. Um, or maybe even people that I'm like just starting to date. I'm like, I don't know. What do you want to do? Just because I genuinely find other people's interests interesting. And also, I think women, I know, especially me again, vulnerable alert, feel the safest when I really like dig, 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 dig to what this is about. I feel the safest when I am making other people happy because no one can be mad at me. No one can punish me. No one can shut me out. No one, you know, can do all the things that hurt. Um, if you are making them happy. And I think that that is why women are such people pleasers. It is the safest form of showing up as long as you know that everyone else is happy. And then procrastination. And I think procrastination kind of buckets in with that paralysis one. But, you know, if we are putting off something that we know will be so true to who we are, whether it be the work that you need to do to dig through an issue in your life, whether it be, I don't know, booking a trip that is going to be transformative, but sounds scary. There are so many things that we kind of drag our feet on because it feels overwhelming because it would expose our true self. Okay. So what can we do about it now that we've identified a bunch of different ways where imposter syndrome absolutely creeps into our life? So I have created a worksheet that I use actually, like I honestly, I use quite a bit. Um, and I just finalized it yesterday and I'm really excited um, because it's based off of things that I've done and I've, you know, I've done lots of research online. Um, I've talked about this in therapy. Um, I have interviewed so many women on the podcast and imposter syndrome is such a reoccurring theme that I've kind of taken some of those nuggets. Um, and there are a couple of questions that I am going to walk us through and I will walk through some examples for me, but these are all in a free worksheet. Just go to freebies on the write your own story.co website or click the link in the show notes. But this I think is going to be a game changer for people who are feeling like they are stuck in people pleasing or for my business girlies who are not showing up in a way that they know they need to show up. Maybe it's, you won't even start the business because you're so afraid what people are going to think of you, or maybe you're too afraid now that you've started to show up online, or maybe you're just too afraid to be yourself and you're in a relationship and with a friend, a family member, or, you know, a partner that you're being all people pleasy in. This is the time to take a step back and think as to why. So my first question to you guys is what are the stories that you're telling yourself? If you were to show up online and talk about your business, what are the stories that you're telling yourself? Are you thinking, I'm not smart enough to be credible to do this? Are you thinking people are going to make fun of me? Um, people are going to think I'm annoying or obnoxious because I'm talking about something that has to do with me when people only really like it when you're talking to them about them. Um, no one is going to want to hear what you have to say. And that's embarrassing. Um, gosh, I can think of a million things, but if you sit and you really let yourself unravel and get to the core of what are the stories that you're telling yourself, 
it's gnarly in there and you need to just hear yourself because it's important because you will know right away where those stories came from, whether it be society. Oh, here's another great one. If women are too loud, if I come in here and talk about my business, or if I come on here and talk about myself or promote this show or promote the courses, God, this is a doozy, but society has conditioned us that no man can handle a woman that is bright and bold and successful. And that no matter what, he will always feel inferior and you are at risk for him abandoning you, treating you poorly, bringing you down. And that is like a long standing and it unfortunately has proved itself time and time and time again. But here I am and I will not dim my light for anyone, a man, a friend, a family member. I have to be who I am and I have to be successful because I support four children. And if anyone in my life thinks that that is too much and that I am too much or that my success is too much or that my energy is too much. And this goes for all my other big bright girls out there. Anyone else can choke on it. I'm sorry. I know that sounds direct, but it is. That's how I feel. If you can't handle this, I'm not your person. Um, and just leave me alone. <laughs> but what I know is that these stories that we tell ourselves are rooted in society's conditioning or past experiences. And that what really, this is the next question, is what is really true? Right where your feet are, is there anyone right now who thinks you're annoying? No. Or did someone tell you that in the past? Is there anyone who thinks you're a bad parent? Literally, is there anyone? If they do, honestly, they can just be removed from your life. What a horrible thing to think or say to someone. Um, but what I love about this part is that we are fact checking the old stories or the conditionings that we have been taught against what is the reality for the here and now. Are you smart? I bet you are. Are you so passionate and great at your business because you built it around something that you so deeply care about? I bet it's true. Are you credible because you've worked your ass off to be? I would think so. Are you bright and bold and beautiful and messy? And is that amazing? I would vote yes. So again, what are the stories that you're telling yourself that are keeping you silent, keeping you perfect, keeping you stuck? And what's really true? It's time to debunk those stories because they are old stories. Okay, that's part one. Are you like me and taking at least an hour to plan your meals every week and then to grocery shop on top only to find out that I throw away half of it because I didn't have it in me to season and chop and prep night after night? It's so embarrassing and I feel awful about it. Are you also like me and worry about if any of the things I buy are healthy enough for me and the family? Well, let me tell you about Hungry Root. Hungry Root is my partner for healthy living. Hungry Root helps me save time, save money, I shop sustainably, and I eat what makes me feel my absolute best. Their mission is to make it easier for more people to eat healthy and feel great every day. Some of my very favorite aspects of Hungry Root are healthy meals in 10 minutes or less. I mean it, no chopping, no seasoning ever. They do it all for you. Honestly, full stop, this is my very, very favorite thing. Every meal is so easy to put together. Often they have steamer bags for vegetables and all sorts of great microwave options too. They also give you healthy snacks and pantry supplies my kids and I both love. Their whole trusted ingredients, which makes me feel like a great mom because I actually know that I'm putting good things in the pantry and in the fridge. Personalized recommendations based on your goals. Mine is heart healthy and it ships to me on my schedule. The best part is also less food waste. No more throwing food out each week, which feels amazing. All you have to do is take their super simple quiz and share your preferences, goals, must haves, and they'll recommend a plan for you and just fill your fridge with food you love. You could be like me and let them surprise you with meals each week, or you can go in and adjust each week before they actually send it to you. And let me tell you, they love your feedback. This is the one thing I actually do. I'll go in there and I'll tell them to send me more of a certain meal or less of a certain snack because we didn't really care for it. One simple click and your order is adjusted. Hungry Root is so much more than a meal kit. They send full-size groceries, which is so much better 
better than pre-portioned package you get with your meal kits. Honestly, couldn't be happier. Use your code WRITEYOURONSTORY40 for 40% off your first delivery plus a free gift for life. Use code WRITEYOURONSTORY40 or just click the link in the show notes for 40% off your first delivery plus a free gift for life. 40% off is huge. The free gift for life promotion is a choice of free cookie dough for life, free veggies for life, or free protein for life. For life means the length of your subscription. Honestly, guys, I love Hungry Roots so much. It saves my butt every single week and I could not recommend it enough. Don't forget, use the code write your own story 40 or just click the link in the show notes. Next, I want you to identify ways in which it's affecting you in the way that you are stuck. Are you not posting as much as you should? Are you not starting the business that you can't stop thinking about? Are you unable to enjoy experiences with your children because you think their uh, behavior is a reflection on you as a parent? Are you going to cocktail parties and not being your true self because you're just obsessed with being perfect because that feels like the safest, best way to be? Are you not being honest with a partner, a family member, or a friend in your life and letting them do things that are hurtful to you because it is easier for them to be hurtful to you than it is for you to say how you really feel? And how can you then on the flip side, so what are those? Okay. So again, identifying what are the ways in which you are stuck? And then how can you show up messy? You guys, let's embrace the mess of life. Tell me one part of your life that is not messy and I call bullshit. <laughs> there is not a single part of my life that isn't messy. Uh, God, and if it is not messy for one second, give it a second. So for example, my room, I try so hard to keep just my room clean. The guy have four kids running around and I'm like, fine everything else, but please let my room be my sanctuary. I turn around for one second and my twins have climbed in my bed because it's the coziest, comfiest. They've charged their iPads on my charger and are living their best life, drowning in my pillows because they just want to be close to mama and they love my bed. How can I show up messy? I could either be like, get out. I just want this one room to be clean. Or I could embrace the fact that my kids are getting older and it is not going to be forever that they are diving in their bed, in my bed to spend time with me. How can I show up messy online? Just get on and start talking and make a video and be weird and fumble and just show up. I promise you it will get better, but it will never even get going until you promise yourself to show up in this world as messy as the world really is. So again, what are the ways you're stuck and how can you embrace the mess and just show up messy? Next is because it's not like these old stories or these old conditionings just get zapped and go away. And yes, we have this worksheet and these questions to continue to ask ourselves, but I want you guys to identify ways how you can build resiliency in this area that you feel yucky and stuck. Is it to every time you're going, every time I'm going to get online to talk about my business courses where I feel a little anxious, I'm like, no one's going to want to hear me talk about me and the things that I love. Do I have to ground myself in what the realities are? I'm smart. I care deeply. I would like, I am determined to be successful. I want to help other women. That changes the energy in my body from the lump in my throat and the tight chest to that like calm, centered, confident feeling. And that is all I want for women. Don't get me wrong. We're messy too, but God, all I want for us is to be able to feel that calm and centered and confident feeling because that is where joy comes from. That's where happiness comes from because you are being your true self. I actually love being messy. Of course it feels the best in like safe spaces where I'm like, you love me when I'm messy. Guess what? Here I am. I'm a mess. But how do you build resiliency? What kind of things can you do to strengthen these muscles? Because we know that these conditionings, not only have they been there your whole life, but they've been there for generations. They're in our bones. So therefore, we need to be strong enough to be resilient. And what are the ways you're going to do that? Next, only two more steps, ladies. You hang in there. Some small goals. So gosh, uh, so when I'm throwing the party, right, for these eight-year-olds and their family, leave a pile of mess just a little pile. Or if I'm going to, I need to talk about my business courses more on social. I literally am obsessed with business. I love talking about business. Why am I denying myself the platform to be able to talk about something I love? So is it to hop on stories once a week to talk about why I love business? 
or to talk about a different type of business that I see women starting and why that is so great and how people could do that in 20 hours a week. I just, again, building these sort of small goals that you can continue to check off because the only way really to continue to battle imposter syndrome is to continue to build on your confidence and your resiliency. And then last but not least, and I preach this all the time and I preach it to myself is how can I keep myself accountable? No one can fix your shit, but you, and I know it's direct, but it's so true. I, so for example, I have built out, I, if you guys listened to the last podcast around how to build a summer with the feelings that you love, this is the end of week one and what a shit show week one has been. Uh, my co-parenting schedule has been all sorts of messed up. Uh, I had a kid super sick. We have had all the different and new activities were coming and going. I have help and I still feel like I'm like drowning and so was I able to hold myself to the fundamental things that I needed to do to show up for my business this week? No, I didn't. And so now I am more motivated than, and I feel super anxious about it. I feel crappy and I feel like, yes, I've showed up for my kids, but not in that like calm centered way that I wanted to show up for my kids. I've been too busy being frazzled because I'm not doing either well. So I could sit here and beat myself up about it, or I can hold myself accountable, know that next week is a new week, take a deep breath and try again next week. And that's all I'm going to do. But I fully am aware whether it comes, no matter what goal you have, the only person that can make it happen is you, no matter how many courses you take, how many podcasts you listen to, how much therapy you go to, the only person who can change your life is you. So I say, put on your big girl pants and hold yourself accountable because imposter syndrome is stifling. It makes people feel like total crap when they are just like the brightest, beautiful, shining stars. And that is all I want for all of us is to be able to remove that lump in our throat or that nervous feeling in our belly and to show up completely as we are beautiful, bright, strong, bold, and messy, you know, okay. To wrap us up here. I genuinely feel like so much of imposter syndrome is because we all crave safety and love and acceptance. And if we show up any other way besides perfect, those th three things are really on the line. And that may be true, but if someone denies you safety and love and acceptance because you are showing up authentically as who you are, they are not your people. And yes, your audience, your following, your friends, your family, your dating pool, your whatever might get smaller, but your quality will be infinitely better. And I fully believe quality over quantity. But if we can't find those things within ourselves, if we can't find safety, if we can't find love, and if we can't find acceptance within ourselves, if we continue to tell ourselves these stories of doubt and fear and shame, how can we ever accept it from any, or excuse me, how can we ever expect it from anybody else? So if I don't feel safe on my own, and that doesn't mean is someone going to come rob me? That means, can I take, well, I hope no one comes around me. Can I take care of myself? Do I love myself? Do I accept myself? Do I value myself? Do I know my own worth? Until I can, and I know all of those answers. I know they're all true. I know they're all in there. And I know they're all buried with these icky, yucky stories and conditioning and generational cycles and all that crap. But if we can dig deeper and find those things that are true to ourselves, where we know we are safe, we know we are loved, we know we are accepted, we know we are bright and bold and beautiful and messy, then we can expect that from other people. But if you don't hold yourself accountable to loving yourself in that way, how can you ever expect it from somebody else? So again, the way we get there is we identify the stories and then actually realize what's the real truth. Identify your negative patterns and ways that you're getting stuck and say, fuck it and just show up messy. Make those simple plans and goals. And most importantly, love yourself enough to hold yourself accountable. Again, I love me a good journal prompt and worksheet. So if you want that, I put it together. I designed it in Canva. It's cute. Um, you can download it in the freebies section of the website, writeyourownstory.co backslash freebies, or you can just click the link in the show notes. But no matter what, if you want it, great. If you don't, totally fine too. This episode has been so cathartic for me. I feel that tightening in my chest letting go. I feel my throat completely opening up because I'm speaking my truth. 
I hope that this has helped someone because that is truly what it is here to do. Um, whether it be in your life or in your business. Um, I feel like this kind of foundational stuff is so important for us living a true, happy, honest, authentic life. But also just because I'm obsessed with business, this kind of stuff, this kind of mental work is so critical for you to be able to show up best at your job, with your business, starting your business, whatever it may be. Um, and this is actually some of the foundational work that I have put into place um, in the Female Founders Academy. Are you a stay-at-home mom who has an idea you just can't stop thinking about, but worry that adding something for you will negatively impact your family? Are you a corporate mom who's got a passion for something and is desperate for more freedom and flexibility or really anything in between? Are you in business? Maybe it's full-time or a part-time, but you're feeling stuck. Are you overwhelmed or maybe it's exhaustion or just genuinely don't know what to do next? Well, trust me, I know how you feel. I've been exactly where you are today. I've been the mom drowning in her corporate career. I've been the mom staying home, but secretly feeling like she's meant for something more. And I've been the mom terrified that her business will impact her family too much which is exactly why I started the Female Founders Academy, because the world needs what you have to offer. Women deserve mentoring, clear, actionable guidance, resources, and a supportive community. And that's what Female Founders Academy is all about. After my 20 year marketing career at everywhere from McCann, New York to Deloitte and some amazing stops in between, I became a consultant and an entrepreneur once I had four kids, four and under. In the past 10 years, I've built both a nonprofit and an e-commerce business. And now I'm here with Write Your Own Story. The good news is I know exactly what it takes and I'm here holding my hand out to help the women behind me live the life they're dreaming about. I'm literally obsessed with business and absolutely nothing would make me happier than helping women live the life they dream about. That's exactly why I created this keep it real, inspiring course built to foster community full of very simple, sharp, tested, highly effective steps that get women feeling simplified, organized, confident, and clear on their business. It's a five week community course from October 2nd through 30th, meeting just once a week. Normally price is $9.97, but with early enrollment, you can get it for as little as $6.97, and there are only 20 seats available. We have weekly one and a half hour interactive classes led by me where we walk through material together and work through it. I offer 30 minute one-on-one -on -one consulting sessions just with me so we can talk about your business and get your plan just right. You have access to the interactive female founders community of women. These women are amazing and I love seeing you guys support each other. Not only that, but I want to make sure you keep going. We've got quarterly accountability check-ins so that we can all get together and celebrate what's working and what's not and keep each other moving. With this also comes a printable workbook, digital templates, and recorded trainings because, you know, life happens and sometimes you miss a class. You also get early access and discounts to all future Female Founder Academy offers. Don't forget, only a 20 student limit because I want these women to genuinely get to know each other, support each other, and help each other grow. Visit writeyourownstory.co backslash Female Founders Academy or just click the link in the show notes to reserve your spot and secure your discount. Don't forget, ladies, the world needs what you have to offer, and I am 100% rooting for you. I can't wait to get started. And honestly, I'm actually super excited to share that I am going to have each chapter, each section of the Female Founders Academy as a self-guided course as well, um, because I've learned so many women are still in the closet, not ready to come out and be like, I actually do have a business idea, but I secretly want to take these courses in silence and just work on it on my own until I'm ready. And I fully respect that. I've also learned for those who do invest in themselves that life happens and you can't show up when you want to show up. And so having the flexibility to have these courses. So this is just kind of the opening to what blocks do you need to remove to show up in marketing, to get your mission statement for your business just right so you can make all your business decisions against a core mission that really aligns to who you are and why you started, um, to help you find your 10% edge because every crowded, every category is crowded, and then really to refine your offer so that you feel super confident and aren't just chasing sales. So um, I'm really excited that those are going to launch on 4th of July because you know I love an independent girly. Um, and so I thought that this was just like a really cool way to launch these chapters um, and to celebrate the independence of women, whether even if you have a partner and family, and we all, you know, it takes a village, um, but 
to my point of, can you say to my point? I don't know. I just did. But to my point of, if you can't feel that safety and confidence and love and acceptance in your own self, how can you ever expect it for others? So I hope this has helped someone in their life. I hope this has helped someone in their business. I hope it has helped everyone feel less alone because I can assure you everyone when I've talked to about this absolutely also suffers from it, but we can do this girls and we can set the example for those around us for the generations to come and imposter syndrome has got to go. So I hope this helped. Um, if you do feel so inclined, download the free worksheet, it's all yours. Um, if you think this would help a friend, send it to as many people as you think it could help, because I think this is truly, uh, a thing for all women. And most importantly, I just hope that you find all the confidence within yourself to show up wholly as you every day, because I think you're amazing. All right, you guys, that's it. Thank you everyone for listening and I'll catch you next time. Well, that's the end of this episode, but promise me you won't stop here with whatever it is you're feeling or dreaming about. I hope you leave today feeling empowered to live life just as you see fit. If this podcast was helpful to you, it would mean the world to me if you could leave a review on whatever platform you're listening on. I genuinely just want to help women live the life they dream about. So if this type of content tracks with you, subscribe to this podcast or visit our website, writeyourownstory.co to download digital courses or to grab a journal and a mug to just dream in and dream with. It's your life, lady. Do you. And just remember, I'm rooting for you and you've totally got this. Thank you.